generic nerf blasters. It's funny. With how much this blaster was hyped up and how generic it ended up being, it was just like 180 degrees away from what they were saying it was gonna be. Oh, Hasbro. I think this was the start of their slow descent into madness. So a quick recap. From like the start of Nerf all the way up to 2018, 2019, the best years. They had some pretty good blasters, they had some pretty bad blasters, but overall, they were doing pretty well. Uh, late 2019 comes around, and Hasbro shows why they need more developers and why they need better designers in their office. So the Ultra One. New technology! This thing was hyped up so much when it was revealed, and I'm gonna be honest, I was very excited about it. This blaster was advertised to be the newest revolution in state-of-the-art technology in the foam-flinging hobby, the most aerodynamic type of dart design yet, in a beautiful gold premium package, with 120 FPS velocities being promised out of this for $50. It has a good capacity, it looks to be super comfortable. It had everything in store for it, right? <laughs> they even went as far out as to paint the Ultra logo in this gold paint to make it as flashy and beautiful as possible. And uh, of course they, they oh, come of course they cheaped out on the other side because Nerf always cheaps out on the other side. But I did not care. I was super excited to see 120 FPS aerodynamic straight shooting dart. I mean, the way they advertised this, they were basically saying, yeah, this is gonna be a Call of Duty laser beam. When you pull the trigger, it's gonna land a hit. And then it came around and... Uh, I mean, it always... Uh, I mean, it kind of just... Uh, let's just... Uh, Let's just start out with the ergonomics. This is a grip. The grip is a grip. It basically tries to replicate the original Elite grips and it does a pretty good job. Even though that is a very tight trigger. Very, very tight. Look at that, that is ridiculous. My finger barely fits in there and I have tiny fingers. Tiny, come on. It has a thumb hole stock because they had to make room for this dart storage for some reason. I don't know why this has a dart storage. It only holds eight when the cylinder holds 25. So the dart storage is completely valueless. But you know what, the thumb hole stock is still there. It's rather tight, but considering how CQB oriented this blaster is, it does the job all right. You also have a pretty nice rev trigger and the trigger itself, oh God, please no, 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 no. But we'll talk about that in a little while. We have this foregrip up here, which is almost the best foregrip possible for something like this, except for this stupid triangular nub thing down here to make it look all technology and ergonomic. It ends up just being this annoying brick that your hands jut into. I don't know, that was a stupid design. If we move back to the stock, it's pretty short, although this is a rather small blaster overall, so that's understandable. The stock itself is very comfortable, and the cheek rest actually is super smooth and comfortable. Even though the ridge between the two halves of the shell is still there, they actually took the effort to sand it down right up there where your face is going to go. Good on you, Hasbro. You did something right with this blaster. As a matter of fact, the design of this blaster in general is honestly one of my favorite designs for any Nerf blaster ever released. It's compact, but yet it still feels big enough to be a good primary. And honestly, this blaster is like, it's very pretty. It looks wonderful in person. You can see that the shell has this sort of diamond camo design on it with the shell that makes it a little bit reflective when the light hits it just right. It's kind of hard to see, although if I zoom in far enough, you can see the diamond pattern and it looks really cool in person. The sort of off-weight kind of like almost silvery design of the white plastic, it's a different kind of white than we're used to. If we bring in the Hades for comparison, it's a little bit hard because of my lighting that kind of adds a little bit of extra texture, but this is a sort of blank white. This one almost adds a sort of bluish pinkish texture to the white to make it even whiter than the original nerf white it looks very premium it reminds me of like an apple product the way that it's presented it looks it looks great that's all i'm really gonna say the blaster looks wonderful 
And just for the one guy who's asking, it has three sling attachment points, two of them very cleverly hidden in the stock. I really like how these two sling attachment points just blend into the stock shell. And then the third one is up at the front. It kind of looks silly, but it actually also doubles as the iron sight. So really, they integrated the three sling attachment points masterfully. And just for good measure, they give you two tactical rails up at the top because one scope isn't enough. You have to have that extra magnification because zero plus zero is I don't know, you're getting magnification out of it, stop asking. Now I'm sure everybody who's watching this video is probably screaming at the camera, shut up and get to the stupid disappointing part, how does this blaster work? Well, don't worry, I'll get to that now. This blaster is basically an Alien Menace incisor reskin. So you have semi-automatic, cylinder-fed blaster with this you for being quiet where it has a cylinder fed and it's it's semi-automatic and that trigger pull is super heavy and i super don't like it and i'll explain that in a moment but yeah that's basically how it works and the darts that it uses were kind of the whole selling point and also the reason this blaster ended up being so horrific i've taken the liberty of getting my box of ultra darts if we go and just pull one out you can see this, this is a Frankenstein project. The whole back of it is sort of designed to be like this aerodynamic, premium looking flight design. The foam is really weird. It's made out of like styrofoam that's been melted together with this sort of wax on it. And the tips are atrocious, very bad quality, not the nerve standard at all. But I mean, the, the whole selling point was that these darts are the best darts. They're gonna shoot straight and they're going to shoot in a straight line like a laser beam. That was, that was what they were saying. How do these work? <laughs> no. They are, they are elite darts. Seriously. They shoot just as reliably as elite darts, except they don't randomly fishtail out of control. That was the only thing they changed about them, and this was a completely exclusive ammo type that was, you could not use these darts in any other blaster, and you couldn't use regular darts in this one. And people were vindicated. People were so mad. Because, like, understandably so, you have this type of dart, which is only compatible with this $50 premium blaster that you said was going to shoot 120 FPS and was going to shoot straight. The darts don't shoot straight, and it doesn't hit 120 FPS. Do you want to know how hard this blaster hits? Mid-60s. I'm not even joking. It's an elite blaster. It's an elite blaster. It really is. It's an elite blaster that you have to use proprietary ammo for, so you can't even use darts on waffle heads in it, and it was a complete scam, and everybody was mad! But what I think is the most upsetting part... The Mega AccuStrike dart has nothing to do with this, right? Wrong. Are you kidding me? It's the same design. The only reason that they would not release this blaster with the darts that actually shoot straight like they intended was the idea that they didn't know how to go about doing it yet. So this was going to be a stand-in until those darts arrived. It's the exact same design that they came out with with the Mega AccuStrike dart in 2018. The only difference is it's a little bit smaller. You're not going to, you're not going to fly that past me. I know that they knew what they were doing. That's just infuriate. You know what? Let's just cut to the firing demo. I need to complain. <sighs> so I should just go over the problem with the trigger, at least now. This trigger is a two-stage trigger. This travel length is the whole trigger. So every time you pull it down, your finger needs to crank that heavy spring all the way down, and it's very easy to miss. So a lot of times you will accidentally dry fire it until you at least get used to using this blaster, which is really annoying, but you know what? Let's just do this. I'm going to be using the full rev up time with each shot. These are basically brand new batteries. I've only used this for the testing process. That's the rev up time.
Notice how I didn't move the blaster at all? And the target's only five steps away, and yet I was still missing the target. This is pathetic. So, I really need to stop flipping the blasters. So, the Ultra 1. This blaster was very much hated. And um, do I think that that hate was justified? Yes, but also no. Let me go over some things. Let's say that this blaster fired elite darts and was compatible with Dart Zone Waffle Heads. What would I think of it? Well, if that was the case, I'd say pretty cromulent elite blaster. Very good shell. Very, very good. Very comfortable. Nice capacity. Pretty good performance. And not a half bad rev up time. Now let's get back to reality. This blaster was introducing a proprietary ammo type. A new proprietary ammo type that was promising to be the next revolution in foam flinging. It did not deliver any of those promises and was a titanic disappointment for everybody who bought it. And the thing that frustrates me so much is they were so close to actually making it good. Here's my example. The Ultra 2 does hit 110 FPS. It, and this one uses worse batteries. This one uses six double A's. This one has the real estate. They're using C batteries. The space is there to make a blaster that was shooting 120 FPS. And, and the Ultra 2 got it, and it was doing six double A's. Okay, well, what about the darts? Um, yeah, I've kind of already disproven that. If they delayed the release of this blaster to 2020, and actually took the time to, to release the darts that were promising to go straight, there you go, your project would have been saved. If this blaster hit the same ranges as the Ultra 2 and the Ultra Pharaoh, which is one of my favorite blasters ever made, and actually included the darts that go straight, this would be the best Ultra Blaster. It would still be the best Ultra Blaster. But the saddest thing about everything is because Hasbro rushed and they didn't put in the thought that was deserved for this blaster, the whole Ultra series is forever cursed. People are still boycotting the Ultra series, even though they have been releasing some pretty good blasters recently, like the Ultra Pharaoh, the Ultra Strike, and to an extent, the Speed. And, and that is that is under some very generous rounding. But the Speed and the Strike, pretty decent blasters, but people don't want to give those blasters a chance because of this one. This one set the bar, and the bar was set super low, so now Ultra is forever seen as a terrible series, and, and people won't give it a chance. It, it, it really sucks. It really sucks, because they were so close. I, myself, really like this blaster. I'm gonna be honest, I really like it. It's very, very fun to play with, but it was just such a bad idea the way that they went about doing it that I can't say that it's an actually good blaster. All I can say is that I personally enjoyed playing with it. It's different with something like the Ultra 2. If you're going to be using the darts that shoot straight or you have a mod kit, this blaster is very good. Or the Ultra Pharaoh, which is actually probably the best sniper that they've ever come out with, but I don't know, I just like the long strike more. I can recommend those blasters objectively, but I can't recommend this one subjectively because it's not worth the $50. It really isn't. But with everything that I've said, if you would like to purchase an Ultra 1, I will link one in the description below. So with that said, thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you're new, like the video if you enjoyed it, and comment down below. What do you think of this blaster? How do you think the Ultra was perceived? Do you think that it's justified to be hated until the ends of the earth? And I will see you all next time. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna explode!